Hi, Calorie Kids, and welcome to episode 16 of season 2. We are finishing our series this month called Unusual. In this episode, we have three segments coming your way. First, we're going to be talking about our big idea. Then we'll be enjoying another Grow TV segment with Andy and Carl. And finally, I'll be showing another object lesson in Kids Grow. But first, I want to talk to you guys about worship. I want you guys to worship God wherever you are. So I created a Calvary PTO Kids worship playlist on Apple Music and Spotify. These playlists are great to listen to at any time. You can worship God while you're at your grandfather's farm riding the tractor. Or you can worship God in the park while you're sliding on a slide or playing on the swings. You can listen to Worship God whenever you want. For help to do so, go into the description under this video or, and there will be a link there. Or go to our website and the link will be in the Calvary Kids Ministry tab. Now let's get started in our unusual series and learn about this week's big idea. Today's big idea is God's love is unchangeable. In this series, we are learning about how God's love is unchangeable, unchangeable through the unusual story of a man named King David. The story we are learning from today is in the Bible and it starts at 2 Samuel 11, 1-15. We're going to be learning about King David and how he was in a wrong, at the wrong place at the wrong time. Let me ask everyone a question. Have you found yourself in a place you weren't supposed to be? I know I have. Like this one time, I was playing on my Game Boy, which is kind of like a, a really old Nintendo Switch, but even way older. And my head was down, really focusing on the game when I was playing. And I was in the mall with my mom. Well, guess what? I just kept on walking and grabbed my mom's hand, except it wasn't my mom's. It was some random stranger's hand. Ugh! I apologized and looked up and around and I couldn't find her anywhere. Just, or just for a second though, until I did find her standing there looking at me, laughing so much, knowing that what I just did. Wrong place wrong time. Well, that's what happened in our Bible story today. King David wasn't exactly where he was supposed to be and it got him into a lot of trouble. I have another question for you. Who here has ever seen something really, really cool and just had to have it, but it would really hurt someone else if you took it? Well, that's exactly what position David was in. And guess what? He didn't make a great choice. David was supposed to be with the rest of the troops at that battle, but David decided to stay at home. One day he noticed a woman named Bathsheba, who he thought was very beautiful. David decided he was in love with Bathsheba, but there was a problem. Bathsheba wasn't available. She was already married to a man named Uriah. But David cared more about his own feelings than about whether Uriah m might be hurt. And honestly, we're not really sure if anyone asked Bathsheba how she felt about all this. Yikes. And believe it or not, it gets worse. David knew that he'd be in big trouble for falling in love with a married woman since that was very, that was way against the rules. Even for a king who could do pretty much whatever he wanted. He tried a bunch of different things to make Uriah go away, but nothing seemed to work. One bad decision kept leading to another until David made the worst decision of all. He sent a Uriah into battle knowing he would be killed. Even though David messed up big time, God doesn't abandon him. Of course David would have to face the consequences of his poor choices, but God still loved him, loved him and did not take away the promises about his future. God's love for David stayed the same. Now let's give it to Carl and Andy at Grow TV and learn more about how God's love is unchangeable. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And it's me, Andy. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends. Talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. <laughs> oh, hey, how's it going? Good, you seem distracted. What are you working on? Oh, this? You probably wouldn't be interested. Okay. Fine, I'll tell you. It's my no mess up notes. Your what? 
No mess up notes. I put everything I mess up on this notepad. Then I do all I can to not mess up. And this week, I've done a pretty good job. Wow, that's cool. So can you tell me what's on the list? What aren't you supposed to do? Well, I mean, I guess, as long as you don't tell anyone. Promise. All right, things I didn't mess up this week. Take a shower, wash my face, make my bed, make my dog's bed, sneeze with my eyes open, sneeze with my front door open, sneeze with my car door open, juggle a gerbil, gamble a goose, shuffle a shamu, tie my shoes, brush my teeth, wrestle a bear, fight a gorilla, tussle with a kangaroo, be on time to school, turn in my homework, do my wildebeest impression. Wildebeest? Yep. What's your wildebeest impression? Oh, well they have a very unique sound and I do a really good impression of them. But I've been told that it gets pretty annoying. Oh, I don't think I've heard it. Oh, <laughs> it's great. You'd love it. All right then, let's hear it. All right. <clears throat> wow. That is amazing. Also, I can see how that gets annoying. <laughs> yeah, back to the list. What? What's wrong? I messed up! No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I was just going over what I haven't done this week, and I just messed up by doing that silly impression. Oh. Oh? Oh? Yeah, I just messed up my whole week, man. Carl, it's gonna be all right. I think you just need to take a breath, relax, and let's, I don't know, let's jump into today's story. Fine. Are we still talking about David? We sure are, and this is a story that really shows just how amazing God really is. Huh, wow. Well, I'm looking forward to this then. Well, the story is happening in 2 Samuel, and David is still king of Israel. Did everyone love him? The people of Israel adored King David. He was a warrior, and God was very good to David. Was he still fighting in battles? He was, but in this story, he stayed back home while his armies went to battle. Why is that? I'm not sure if it was because he was getting older, or maybe this specific battle was a small one, or maybe they just didn't need him. But either way, David was at home on his roof. On his roof? What was he doing? Just going for a walk, but it was at this moment that he saw a woman named Bathsheba. <laughs> That's a funny name. I guess, yeah. Well, David thought she looked really pretty, and so he had his guards go get her, and David fell in love with her, and she became pregnant. Oh, that's so cute. Well, well what? The thing is, Bathsheba was married. Yeah, to David. Nope. No. You mean, she was married to someone else, and David did what he wanted? Decided to make her his own wife? Yep. That's not right. Not at all. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe he didn't know. I mean, maybe it was just an honest mistake, right? <laughs> Andy. Tell me he didn't know. Tell me he didn't know. Andy. Well. Well, again? I mean, he knew? Come on, David. Yeah, and it gets worse. How could it possibly get worse? Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, was a soldier in David's army. Uh-huh. And David sent out an order to the general. Oh, I'm scared to ask. What was the order? He made sure Uriah was at the front of the group during the battle. Wait, wouldn't that be like the worst place to be? I mean, he would probably die. Unfortunately, that's what David wanted, and sadly, Uriah did die. That's awful! How could David do that? David had messed up, and he thought this was the best way to fix everything. Fix everything? He just made it worse! I thought I was messed up, but <laughs> wow. David made a real big mess of things. I totally get why you'd say that. You know, we all mess up in different ways, but you know what's unusual? God still loves us. Not David, though, right? Why would you say that? What? What David did was so wrong! It's like, unforgivable! I mean, I know God loves everyone, but... How could God still love David? It's impossible. Well, I have some news for you, Carl. God did still love David very much. I mean, yeah, David really did make some terrible mistakes and he would have to deal with the consequences of those things later, but God never stopped loving David. So God loves us no matter what we do? And there's nothing that we can do to change how much God loves us? That's right, nothing can make God love us any more or any less. <laughs> wow, that definitely makes me feel better about messing up because I know God's love is unchangeable. Hey, Carl. That's our big idea. Today's big idea is God's love is unchangeable. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. three. God's, God's love, love is, is unchangeable. unchangeable. Yeah. <laughs> unchangeable like my pants. I've never changed them. But it's like fine cheese. You know, the longer you age them and don't touch them, the better they become. Well, I learned a lot this month. What a unusual and unlikely story David had. I'm glad. So what are you going to do with that notebook? I'll probably get rid of it. Kind of smells like up dog anyway. What's up dog? Not much. What's up with you? <laughs> I can't believe you fell for that. It's <laughs> up <laughs> Look who fell now. All right, we'll see you next time, kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV.
Thanks, Carl and Andy. This bowl of water represents our life. And this pepper represents our sin or things we've done, but that pull us away from God. Sometimes we hurt people. Sometimes we offend people. Sometimes we allow one bad decision to lead to another until it's just one big mess. But unlike people who may not forgive us, God's love is unchangeable. God's love chases our sin away so we can be truly close to God. So God's kind of like the soap. And if I soap up my finger and dip it into what is our life around all this sin and grossness, look, that, if you see what the pepper just did, that's how God's love washes away our sin. Aren't we glad God's love is unchangeable? Let's remember to be thankful and grateful to God for that unchangeable love all week. So let's do that. Let us know that even though we might feel God doesn't love us anymore for something we did, God's love is unchangeable and he loves us so, so much and gives us so much grace. Our next episode will be starting a new series called Promise, learning about the promises God gives us. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope to see you next Sunday when we learn about more about the Bible. See ya, kids. Calvary and guests, it is so good to be with you this morning. My name is Pastor Kathleen and I'm going to be your online host throughout the service today. If you are new with us, we encourage you to text NEW to the number that's on the screen or head to our website and fill out a brief form so that we can connect with you later on this week. 
We are so excited to join together as the church this morning. At this exact moment, we are joining together in person on campus and of course online here as well. I just think it's really great to remind ourselves that we are not alone as we meet with God together this morning. For the next 45 minutes, we will sing songs of worship, pray together and have a teaching time where we turn to scripture. Now, would you please join us as we sing songs of worship to God together? Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Calvary Church. My name is Pastor Bobby, and I'm going to get the opportunity to lead you in worship this morning. So wherever you are, would you make yourself just very aware that we're about to sing praises and songs of praise to God. And so if you need to just focus a little bit better by standing or getting away from some distractions, let's do that together and let's sing together this morning. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Oh, you're worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. We're just going to take some time and we're going to read a scripture this morning from 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 58. And it says this, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord 
Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. In the crushing, or in the pressing, as you are making new wine. Oh, in a soil high, oh, now surrender, as you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you into your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. Oh, because I came here with nothing. But all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me well in the crushing or in the pressing you are making new wine or in the soil high oh now surrender as you are breaking new ground you are breaking new ground and so i yield to you into your careful head when i trust you i don't need to understand so make me a vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be oh because i came here with nothing but all you have given me jesus bring new wine out of me oh jesus bring new wine out of me oh jesus bring new wine out of me because where there is new
So God, we come before you today and we lay our lives down before you. We remind ourselves of your grace and your mercy and your sacrifice and we praise you because you are good and we submit our whole lives to you and we just ask Holy Spirit to fill us that we would be a vessel in order to do what it is that you have commanded us to do. And so we give our lives to you. We thank you and we love you. In your name I pray, amen. Hey Calvary, even though it is summer, there is a lot happening around here. So to stay connected, head to our website consistently, calvaryptbo.church so that you can stay up to date. Youth is happening every Wednesday night throughout the summer. If you have a teenager, grades 6 to 12, there is a night plan just for them. To stay up to date on what is happening each week in youth, you can connect with Pastor John Mark at the email below or by going to their youth page on Instagram, calvaryptbo.youth. Are you ready for this? We have a live in-person VBS for our kids called Knights of the North Castle. It is happening the week of August 16th to the 20th. And if you would like to volunteer, if you're a teenager or an adult, please connect with Pastor Jesse at the email on the screen. And if you would like to register, you can head to our website, calvaryptbo.church and click the link on the main page. There are three ways that you can give if you call Calvary Church your home church. Guests, please do not feel obligated to give. First, you can give online by heading to our website and just clicking on the blue giving icon. You can e-transfer donations at calvaryptbo.church or if you're here on campus, you can place them in the white boxes on your way out at the exit, or you can head to the ATM in the main lobby. Now, we are going to head into our time of teaching. So grab a pen, paper, or open your phone to take notes as we continue on in our summer series, The Bold and the Brave. Hi, Calvary. I'm so glad you can join us today on Calvary Online. And if you're new to Calvary or joining us for the first time, I want you to give a special welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Jesse and I'm the children's pastor here at Calvary. And we are leading up to our first in-person VBS on campus since before COVID. Talk about Bold and Brave, a group of children running havoc throughout a building that I'm responsible for. Ooh. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. It's going to be an awesome week of learning about God and finally being in community with like-minded people in person for kids. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to be continuing our Bold and Brave series and I got the opportunity to pick who I got to speak on. The only stipulation is it had to be someone bold and brave. Well, there are a lot of people throughout the Bible that are bold and brave. However, I thought to myself, this is great, I'll do David. This month, our kids online have been learning about David, and he's bold and brave in so many ways, except that Pastor John Mark and Pastor John both spoke on David these last two weeks. So I think you all get it. David is bold and brave and different. But if you do want to learn more about David, ask your kids what they are learning about this month. Watch Calvary Ki after they watch Calvary Kids Online. All this to say, my second choice in this Bold and Brave series is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or how I like to name them, Shadrach and Benny. I'm titling the sermon, Stand Firm, and we're going to see what it means to stand firm like Shadrach and Benny. But first, let's read the scripture in Ephesians 6, 13. It says, Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. And after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray that um, this message just reaches the, out, the hearts to our congregation, both in person and online, God. I pray that they learn about what it means to stand firm, what it means to be bold and brave like these characters from the Bible. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. So when I was thinking about Shad, Rack, and Benny, or really all these characters in the Bible that are bold and brave, I was trying to pick out what makes these characters bold and brave. And the question haunted me because I would like to think of, to, of myself, I'm bold and brave. In my everyday life, I would like to think that I have courage. 
I kill those spiders in my house when my wife asks me to. Hashtag bold and brave. I can tell the Starbucks person that my order is wrong and ask them to make me a new one. Hashtag bold and brave. I can go on that new scary roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. No problem. I just need to make sure I take a gravel before I get to the park. Hashtag bold and brave. You see, we all have these things that we know we can do that help us think we have courage. Everyone is afraid of something. We can stand up for, and we can stand up for these fears. The fear of public speaking, the fear of heights, spiders, the dark, big words that you don't know how to pronounce or spell for that matter, like hippopotamusquipedalophobia, which is the word for the fear of long words. How ironic is that? You see, we do these things to make it seem like we are bold and brave, but are we really? Reading over Shadrach and Benny's story, these guys were legit bold and brave. In Daniel chapter 3, these three amigos had to stand firm in what they believed in. Here's what God says about it in Daniel chapter 3, starting at verse 8. It says, But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow, da bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flute, scyther, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach and Benny, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage, ordered Shadrach and Benny to be brought before them. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach and Benny, that you refuse to serve my God or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you'll be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to re rescue you from my power? Shad, Rack, and Benny replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. When I was reading over this passage the, and thinking about where does courage come from, how do I become bold and brave? How do I stand firm so confidently that even if I got a second chance to change my mind and save myself from death, what gave th these three that much confidence? And it led me to faith. And here's where the journey began. What is faith? Faith, according to Hebrews 11.1, 1, says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And in Hebrews, it refers to the covenant of God. However, I feel like we can have faith in a lot of things. For example, I can have faith in myself. And when I was reading Shad, Rack, and Benny's story, I knew they, had, they for sure had faith in themselves. Look at them. The three musketeers had enough faith in themselves that they moved up the ladder of leadership. They just weren't regular guys around the kingdom of Babylon. They were ordered by the king to be put in charge of the province of Babylon. They weren't just regular guys. They were smart guys that had power. Now, it was Daniel in the chapter before that helped them, these terrific trio, into the cool position. But even before that, they were actually chosen in Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. And th this is literally why they were chosen word for word, because they were strong, healthy, good looking, and smart. These guys had confidence in themselves. They must have been dripping confidence after being told that they were chosen for these reasons. But was it the faith, was it faith in themselves that kept them from bowing down to the statue the king had made? 
Absolutely not. I get it. You can have faith in yourself, but fire is fire. <laughs> Everyone knows that anyone placed in the furnace will die. Unless you had some sort of superpower that no one knew about, these guys needed more than just faith in themselves to stop them from that bowing down. Well, maybe it wasn't faith in themselves. Maybe it was faith in right and wrong. They knew the difference between right and wrong, and it, and it stood up for it. Like I said, they were chosen by the, the, this king to be trained by the teachers of Babylon, and they knew things. Shad, Rack, and Benny know the rules of the land and the rules of their ancestors. They know there is only one true God. Here is the issue. They are smart. They also know the laws of nature. If Shadrach and Benny only had faith in right from wrong, then they know dying is wrong. Dying is bad. Yes, they would also understand that bowing down to a false god like the one the king made is bad as well. But if their faith is only in what is perceived as right and wrong, their death would actually outweigh, the, would be way more wrong than the wrong of bowing down. To bring this to today's logic, there are also things that are considered right in our society that we as Christians do not believe are right. Where do we get the knowledge of what is right and wrong? If, we, if our understanding of what is right and wrong is through the law, then Shadrach and Benny should have bowed because the law was changed, but they didn't. It was beyond their faith of right and wrong. So if it's not faith in themselves, and it's not faith in right or wrong, or good and evil, maybe it's faith in community. Everyone has a community. Family, friends, co-workers. During the Euro Cup, we saw, I saw the community of Italians driving down the downtown core, downtown core with their flags hanging from their cars. There's sports communities like the disc golf community I've recently discovered. And there's the hockey community that I hope to be joining in Peterborough this next season. Music brings community through concerts and fandom. I don't know a youth pastor that hasn't told their youth group through some sort of sermon saying, Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Community is important. But this trio went against their community. Yes, the three of them stood firm, but their faith couldn't just be in their own little community because all their fellow Jews didn't stand with them. They bowed like everyone else. Why? Because the community can't stop fire. The faith we need to be bold and brave isn't in community, it isn't in ourselves, and it isn't in our own knowledge of right and wrong. It needs to be fully in our Father in heaven. So what does that mean for us? You guys might be looking at me asking, okay, Jesse, this should be easy then. Have faith in God. I'm sorry to say this, it's not that easy. Having faith like Shad, Rack, and Benny is beyond the courage of sending back your order at Starbucks. Having faith in God takes discipline. Back in Daniel 3, 17, 18, when King Nebuchadnezzar gave this trio one last chance for their lives, they said, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your God or worship the gold statue you have set up. Do you read that? Right there, even if he doesn't, they went all out. They would have died for this conviction. That the God of the Bible is who he says he is. That's the faith we all need. That's the type of faith that grows. That's the faith that's actually contagious. And it's not easy to get that kind of faith. It's hard to go against your own natural instinct to survive, to stick to what is right, to not follow what literally every other person in a city is doing and going against the grain. What they did had crazy courage and even more crazy faith in God. What's special for us is that it's not that hard for us. Don't get me wrong, Jesus never promised that it was going to be easy. However, this trio didn't have Jesus, or did they? We today get the rest of the story in Daniel. We know that these guys didn't burn up, even though the guys that threw them into the furnace did. And what else happened? There was a fourth in the fire, described in the Bible as looking like the Son of God. Shad, Rack, and Benny 
had the faith in God more than me and you could ever have. We got to read their story and, and the stories of David and the stories of Jesus about a God that never fails, a God that wants to be with us, and a God that wants a relationship with us. All we need as believers is a fraction of that faith that these men had, but that's what's amazing about God is that he gives us these stories which allow us to have even more faith than these, this fantastic trio. There is no limit in what God wants to use you for. There is no limit to the plan he has for you to, to be bold and brave to the people around you. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for today and the day you've made. I thank you that um, you've given us this word that we get to understand that even though we, th there's a lot of things we can have faith in, we know that the true faith that we need is in you, the Father that's, a, that's in heaven. God, I pray you continue to give us courage. You continue to give us wisdom in everything that we do so that we can be a, a, a wrecking force in Peterborough, that we can be a, a change for the people around us and, and that we can be who you've called us to be through our purpose. And so God, I pray you continue to help us and guide us in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a song that Hillsong wrote called Another in the Fire, and I hope you guys can listen to it through whatever way you can. It's on YouTube. It's a song that brought me this scripture, and I, ho I hope it will encourage you. And while you listen, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you and your faith today. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may be abound in hope. Through the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. I hope that you were encouraged by our time of teaching this morning to go and be bold and be brave. Here at Calvary, we want to come alongside of you as you follow Jesus for practical ways that you can move forward in your faith by taking a next step. Would you head to calvaryptbo.church slash next steps or email one of our pastors from our staff page. We would love to connect with you. Don't forget that we are gathering in person on campus now with limited seating available. So we just ask that you register beforehand on our website so that we can make sure that we have a spot for everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I pray that you felt encouraged and that you felt lifted up by being with the church this morning. I hope to see you soon.